One of the skills that we need for the GED science test is to be able to pick out um, what's known as the independent variable versus the dependent variable when we look at a science experiment or a, si or a hypothesis. Um, so the GED will use this language. It's one of the few uh, vocabulary terms that you actually have, should have memorized. Okay, so let's talk independent versus dependent variables. So if you have any experience with the scientific method, and if you don't, you should probably stop this video right now and go check out a scientific method video because that's the first step. But if you have any um, experience with the scientific method, you know that scientists often start um, the process um, with some wondering. They start asking themselves questions. They look at the world around them. They notice things that are happening and they ask themselves a question. So this happens to me all the time. I'm not a scientist. I'm a GED teacher, but still, um, this is a question I ask myself every year. Why don't my plants grow? So really, um, every year I'm kind of a city girl and I've moved now that I don't live in the city and I think, you know, um, I am going to make this wonderful garden and I'm going to have all these vegetables and I'm going to eat food right out of the ground. And this sounds really exciting for a city girl like myself. Uh, and so every year I buy a lot of plants and or seeds. I start the seeds, I plant the plants and I kill everything. Um, literally I spent probably upwards I won't even tell you how much I spent because it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, last year, um, gardening, and I ended up getting one head of very bitter lettuce. So it was the most expensive head of lettuce um, I've ever had in my life uh, because of all the money I put into it. But that was out of probably hundreds of plants that I planted. So question, why don't my plants grow? So if I were a scientist, I might start with that. Now, you know, what I'm looking at is I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about my plant's growth. This is the variable that I'm talking about, you know, um, and, and I'm asking why don't my plants grow? So I think there's all these things that could be affecting my plant's growth. So, you know, I might start just kind of brainstorming. Um, why don't my plants grow? Well, you know, I know that I'm doing the basics, the watering and the sunshine. So maybe I might guess that it's my soil's pH level. Or maybe um, I guess that there's some kind of fungus uh, that's growing in my yard. Um, maybe I'm not getting the right amount of sunshine uh, on the area where I chose to plant my um, crops. Or maybe it's because of this Arizona soil that I'm using has uh, too much clay, so it's the level of clay in the soil. So a lot of different things I could it could be, you know, and I could keep guessing for a long, long time. But as you guys know, or hopefully do know, when I go to form my hypothesis as a um, scientist, it's very, very helpful to just pick one of these, to pick one of these, one of these things that I think is affecting my plant's growth. What's affecting my plant's growth? So let's just narrow it down to one. Um, maybe it's this, the soil's pH level, the soil's pH level. And so uh, from this, I would form my hypothesis. And that is, my hypothesis is maybe, um, there is an ideal pH range of soil for plant growth. And this isn't the only way to write a hypothesis, and I'm not even trying to claim that this is the best hypothesis in the world, but all I want to show you is that there's this kind of interplay of two different variables here. I have a pH range that's a variable or a factor here, and I have my plant growth. And what I'm thinking here is that my pH is really what's going to affect the growth. 
the pH level affects the growth. And so when I want to talk about independent and dependent variables, I often will think about that word effect. Um, and so I'm going to give myself a new page here. And I'm just going to write that one more time. If I'm saying my pH levels affect my plant growth. When you talk about your independent and your dependent variable, it's your um, independent variable that does the affecting. Whatever you think is like making the change, making the difference, the big that's the independent variable. Uh, the thing that is being affected is the dependent variable. And why do we call this one's the easier one for a lot of students to understand? Uh, why do we call the the growth the dependent variable? Well, because we say we're saying that plant growth depends on my soil's pH. The pH, the plant growth depends on the other thing. So the plant growth is the dependent variable. Okay, I'm going to give you one more example. This is a um, kind of fun one. Um, one of the Jeopardy science games that I play in my GED class has this really fun graph that plots um, temperature against UFO sightings, and it makes me giggle every time. Now, I don't have the actual graph, so I'm just going to make up some data here, but I've seen it enough times to know that it's kind of a scatter plot that goes generally up. Like, the hotter the temperature gets, the more people are seeing UFOs. Let me say that again. The hotter the temperature gets, the more people are seeing UFOs. And so, the interesting thing here is if I want to identify which one is the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable, again, I can remember that little phrase. The independent variable, whoops, affects, if I can get it around affects, because um, that one always affects the dependent variable. The dependent variable depends on the other, or the independent variable affects the dependent variable. Okay, so let's see. What do I think affects it? Do I think that the number of UFO sightings affect the temperature? Like if I see more UFOs, I see three UFOs in the sky, suddenly the temperature is going to rise? Or do I think that temperature affects UFO sightings? Is it that the hotter it gets, the more likely I am to see a UFO? I'm going to guess, and I'd be right, that it's the temperature that's the independent variable here. Because it's probably uh, the temperature affecting, um, whoa, I can't spell temperature, um, affecting my number of UFO sightings. I know you guys have seen it when it gets really hot. You see all kinds of interesting, um, you know, apparitions in the distance and kind of squiggly lines off the highway and things look a little funky. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if the hotter it gets, the more likely we are to imagine that we saw a UFO sighting. Now, maybe that's not really what's going on in this graph, but that's what I would assume. And so I would say that the temperature here in this case is the independent variable and the UFO sightings are the dependent variable. Now, uh, the nice thing is there's no guarantee that the GED will do this, but the normal thing on a graph. Now, the GED loves to have trick questions, so again, I'm not going to guarantee that this is going to be so. You better make sure that you see which one affects the other. But the normal thing on a graph is to put your independent variable on the horizontal axis, the one that goes left-right. and your dependent variable on the vertical axis, uh, vertical axis, the one that goes up down. And again, that's just the normal, uh, there's no guarantee that they have to stick by that convention, um, but that can also be a really big clue to you. So if you're just absolutely not sure, um, very frequently they'll give you a graph and, and that might be a hint for you as well. Okay, great. If you have any questions, um, just uh, drop them in the comments.